As Edmonton's bench boss, Kevin Lowe has done a lot of coaching, but hasn't had to say much to a pair of blue line workhorses like Yanni Ninema and Roman Hamerlik, or Tommy Salo as the Oilers goalie continues to have an all-star season. Another aspect of Edmonton's game that makes them better the more they do it is hitting. The physical portion of the Oilers plan has on many nights led them in the right direction, and they intend on employing the same tactics versus tonight's opponent. That would be Carolina, who on defense are led by former Oiler Paul Coffey, who's trying to perk up the defending Southeast Division champions. While up front, an offensive lightning rod on many nights is the Canes acquisition from Philadelphia. Deep in the heart of basketball country, it's a different sort of March Madness this evening as Carolina hosts Edmonton. in Carolina for tonight's game against the Hurricanes. Good evening and welcome to Bolson Oilers Hockey on A-Channel. I'm Gene Principe. We welcome our viewers joining us tonight through parts of Saskatchewan. We join the Oilers at the end of a three-game road trip. It started in Nashville on Sunday, and as you saw right here on A-Channel, the Oilers battling back from a 3-0 deficit before the Predators held on for a 4-3 victory. The next night, it was Atlanta, tied at zero after two with the Thrashers before the number one line of Bill Guerin, Doug Wade, and more specifically, Ryan Smith, led the Oilers to victory. The Oilers looking for a win tonight to move a couple of points closer to Colorado. The Avalanche winning last night over Hannah Anaheim by a score of four to two. And we talked to Ryan Smith about the trip and his second career hat trick. Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling anytime you, you score a goal in the league and uh, and now to get a hat trick, uh, it, it's it's a it's a great feeling, no question. But he played really well. He set me up um, on two of them. So I mean, when you're playing with players like him and Billy, uh, it uh, it makes uh, life a lot easier. No question, it was a, a must win, and we uh, um, we fought for it. Obviously, it was a battle right to the third period, and then uh, uh, we started breaking loose and. Uh, you know, we need uh, we need to step up in, in situations like this. Obviously, uh, the division's really close, and uh, we're obviously fighting for a playoff spot. With more on uh, tonight's newest order, tonight's game, and as well the trade deadline, let's go upstairs and join John Garrett and Bruce Buchanan. Gentlemen. Thanks, Gene. Good evening, everybody. John Garrett, the NHL trading deadline has come and gone. Uh, some blockbuster deals expected, uh, none really happened yesterday, but uh, would you say that the Colorado Avalanche probably did better than any other team uh, leading up to the deadline? Well, you look at the trades that were made and you have to think, well, okay, you go back a month. And I think that's when the managers would like the trading deadline to be anyway. And you think of the Ray Borg trade. And I was really surprised that Detroit and St. Louis and even Dallas, those three teams that think they're in the elite in the Western Conference didn't do something to match the Ray Bork acquisition by Colorado because everybody knows that with Adam Foote and Ray Bork, now Colorado is almost on a par with St. Louis who have Chris Pronger and Al McInnes. And you think, okay, now Colorado legitimately can say, yeah, we're one of the top three or four teams in the Western Conference. And then the other trades, and, and you think of Dermot, Titov, and then you think of Calgary, they needed some help on defense, so they get that. With Brad Warenka coming over, Rene Corbet wasn't doing much, so they get Sergei Kripakras off a guy who potentially could score some points. So they help themselves, but you're right, none of the blockbuster stuff that I thought was going to happen, and I really thought that Detroit would try and match the acquisition of Ray Bork. You mentioned German Titov, he will make his order debut tonight. Uh, the Oilers involved in a couple of deals leading up, and Titov coming to the Oilers in exchange for Josef Varenic. Well, Germán Titov is a very flexible guy. He can play the wing, he can play center, he's good on face-offs. He was the third leading scorer on the Pittsburgh Penguins this year, so he can put the puck in the net, and plus he has size. And I think that's something that the Edmonton Oilers wanted. They said, okay, if we do trade Josef Varenic, we want to get a guy back who has that same physical presence. And everybody knows Varenic wasn't a physical sort of player, but they wanted at least him to be big. And Titov played the more physical game than Josef. 
and has put up more points. Speaking of a physical presence, Carolina made a deal uh, getting Sandy McCarthy, the enforcer from Philadelphia, for Ken Manderville. Well, the Carolina Hurricanes were really uh, saddened by the fact that Gary Roberts had to do their fighting, and Gary Roberts was putting up the points, but he was also doing the fighting. And Gary Roberts, at this point in his career, with the neck injury and the neck history, he shouldn't have to be the physical presence of the Hurricane. And so they got Sandy McCarthy, and hopefully Gary Roberts won't have to do that anymore. And everybody gets a little taller when you have an enforcer, one of the top five in the league on the bench. Now we do have a game tonight between the Oilers and Hurricanes, a critical game for both these clubs. Well, you look at Carolina, they're battling to make the playoffs, and I think they have to look at this as a more desperate situation than the Oilers, but the Oilers want to put some distance between themselves and eighth place. The Hurricanes, a chance to jump into seventh place in the Eastern Conference with a victory against the Oilers tonight. Up next, the opening face-off between the Oilers and Hurricanes, live from the Raleigh Sports and Entertainment Center.